Hey guys, pretty fun build today. Um, working with the Abomination. Now this is a custom pack that I made. Uh, and this varies different from my other things. Where This wasn't really meant to win. In fact, I was expecting little success with it. But as I went on, it, it got more promising than I thought it would. Um, and you'll have to see, but we we actually end up doing pretty well. But yeah, this is a pack with every single start of battle pet in the game that, that can fit in a the pack. There's actually, I'll, I'll put on screen now, a few of the pets aren't able to make it into the pack because there's so many tier one start of battle pets. And I think there's a lot of tier, I can't remember what. It's mostly tier one. Uh, but yeah, so that's the idea of this, is we have all the start of battle pets, and the reason we have all the start of battle pets is for the Abomination, the new tier 4 pet, which at the end of turn swallows 1, 2, or 3 start of battle pets and uses their abilities. So, yeah, you're gonna see here I'm grabbing a Salamander. Now, I did have some flexible slots in this pack. I, I think I had like four or six slots just with the way it worked out. Um, one of the ones I grabbed was Salamander, which honestly I probably could have had a better pick, but the way Salamander works is it gains stats when you buy start of battle pets, and since pretty much all of them are start of battle pets, I, uh, I figured it was worth, if there's any pack to have Salamander in, it's probably this one. So. That's one of the new pets. Another one, you're gonna see my biggest focus is on uh, pets that aren't start of battle because I, I have so few and they're so important. So like the baboon there, I need for some sort of scaling. Because really, it's hard to make a build that's just start of battle pets. E even with just like snipes, it's difficult. So my, my foods and my non star battle pets are really important but we're on to turn seven now and that means we can start searching for abomination now i did quite it and there it is i i love the look of this pet by the way it's hilarious and since it's taking a panda this turn it's actually just kind of faint at the start of turn it's very amusing seeing what types of things it should it'll pick up this is not the way you should do abomination i guess i should make that clear really really bad idea to uh to take abomination in order to and just fill your shop there's so many better pets you can take but this actually works out pretty well and i think yeah i combine these i wish i didn't i wish i didn't combine those i would have loved the extra turn of scaling on the abomination the lynx gets the stats that was a misplay by me but yeah um this gets really fun. I, I'm trying to focus on builds that even if I don't win, I'll have fun. Just because right now, Arena is very unbalanced. And here's a cool thing. With level up rewards, you can only take one if you're buying them. But Abomination is able to take both of the level up rewards without it ruining it. So that's a fun little tiny use case, I suppose. And yeah, we're on six wins, five health. Now four health, which is, this was one of my first runs. I was very surprised with how well this did. Now, turn five, or sorry, tier five, we have a little bit of flexibility. And so, as in terms of what pets we can have. So I decided we would load up on Husky and make our team mostly about the abomination with some stats and then let the abomination do all the work as far as uh what uh excuse me as far as what start of battle effects actually go off now there's some better ones for sure since it's getting stats things that use those stats like highland cow or uh leopard are very valuable pets to have another one you see right there is the stegosaurus that's a very nice pet to have. Um, by the way, this might- oh, I'm masking over this. 
us sniping that Chimera meant it couldn't get any mana, which is the only reason we won that. We're gonna run into a lot of these really overpowered pets at the moment, which Team Wood are saying they're gonna fix very soon, but um, at the moment we're running into them. And so that's a great roll, by the way, getting a Stego there. And so countering them gets really important. For example, that microbe there triggers the vampire bat. Everyone sees this. And yeah, I mean, this is most of what Customs Arena is right now, is these overpowered builds, which is unfortunate. It, it makes it frustrating to search for these things. Again, why I spend so much time focusing on making it enjoyable. I wish I took the cockatrice there. The reason I didn't is because since Abomination only activates pets effects at level one, and this is a great pet team, by the way. I have no quarrels with whoever put this together. But since it only triggers at level one, Cockatrice only will turn pets that are level one into stone. So that that's why I did that. But here you see we've got three different pets now with the level three abomination and two of them use the stats of the pet so our husky in the front's getting 17 mana and we get a 20 trumpets for a golden retriever from our highland cow that was Sleipnir and uh and the high yeah the highland cow which we just used both really good things to have we're seeing gonna level up here i feel really good about taking level ups especially <laughs> with a level 3 Leopard on the line here, essentially. It, it, this turn, essentially, my Abomination is just a level 3 Leopard. And, you see, it's nice. Unfortunately, we get Warg Nuked. Warg Nukes are... the... another one of those builds. But, uh, nonetheless, we continue. I mean... Chimera is a problem, but you're gonna see we have a bit of a solution for it in our next two games. I think it's what most people who are trying to run not Chimera and not Warg are running. Which, by the way, what an what awful hits there. If you're running scaling, the last thing you want to do is have a Kraken as one of your grabs. You can see here we get Warg nuked yet again. There goes our whole team, but that Crisp actually draws it for us with the help of their uh, Great One, which is summoned there. But yeah, so we're still in here, we're still on 9 wins, we're cutting it close. 2 Mantis Shrimp and a Stegosaurus, Just pretty good hits, can't complain about those for sure. But yeah, uh, here we are going in, that's a, that's a pretty nice team, I won't lie. The, uh, the coconut there is actually, I, I think the reason, well, it was close. But yeah, I will get us to the second game now. So here we're into game two, and I think this is where I start taking the pet. Okay, I think the husky is the most important part of this, just because it's the only way we can keep up with what customs is right now. But there's another pet that I think we grab this game that is very important. Now you see here, we're running duplicates, which means we're axe handle houndable. I've got Barghest there, and I've got a uh, Bunyip, and yeah, we get we get hounded. It, it's very. That's another thing I really hope they change with the reworks. Axe Handle Hound does not feel fun to play. I can still tell you what. <sighs> for me personally, I don't want to speak for others. Now, if you're seeing Wombat there and wondering why it's in this pack, uh, it is a start of battle pet. While it copies a faint ability, it is designated as start of battle and i don't think i got any games where my abomination ate a wombat um abomination could absolutely become a faint summoner if it takes a wombat and i think that's actually a, one of the better things you can take but i think i was wary of that because there's a lot of chimera being run right now and chimera is uh, only does anything on faint if it uh if it has mana, and obviously I don't have any mana on this team. So I think I tried to avoid that. But here you see, I've been, every single game, I tried for level ups on tier, 
or on turn five to try to get an early abomination. And um, <laughs> I don't think it's in any of the three games we do today that I show you today, but I actually did get one abomination. Now, usually I'd expect with how many level ups I was getting to count like quite a few, but I, I was pretty surprised. I actually was thinking of swapping Wyvern into the pack. But here is the most important thing for me. This is the Mandrake. And man, is it important to what we're doing. Mandrake can cancel faint abilities. Not cancel, but they can use, give it the dazed thing, which means that the faint ability will not go off, or any ability on that pet will not go off. And since Microbe, which is what's being used a lot in order to enable Vampire Bat, and Chimera are both tier 4, a level 2 Mandrake will cancel pretty much everything there. Here our Abomination is going to take a Meerkat, which means it's going to give some attack to the adjacent friends. Not that useful, but it's nice. Here you can see that uh, faint countering in action there. And yeah, we've got our Abomination again. Now we have a level 2 Mandrake, which is the level we want it. And we've got a Husky. And we've got a second Abomination. So, a really good start. We've got 5 health left. We've got 5 wins. It's turn 8. Fantastic start for this, uh, for this run. A lot of these really floundered. Uh, if I didn't get the abomination early or I didn't get uh, scaling early uh, Husky is not the only thing I have in this pack that does that and you see great hit by that wombat there with that Nessie It's another great faint pet but There's other scaling there's elephant seal obviously there's a baboon and I think I had bird of paradise in some of these before I swapped it for uh, tiger uh, because I wanted to be able to repeat Abomination abilities, which worked well, but it's not in any of these three games. I, I think I did around 20 games of this, maybe? Maybe less? Which, by the way, I think in one of these, it, it might have already happened, I'm not sure. But... Uh, I know I run into Kelby. Sorry for the, the processing there. Um, Kelby is a... another... I, I, I say another, like I'm established at all, but Kelby's a YouTuber that's pretty well known, and streamer as well. Or maybe they just stream? No, I'm not sure. We get Ward nuked there, it's not interesting. It's also 90% of my gameplay at the moment is Ward nukes, so you're seeing the fun games where that doesn't happen quite as much. But now we've got double Abomination, double Husky, this is some fun. And you see next turn. I'm gonna be leveling stuff up. We haven't been winning as much as I wanted to these last few rounds, which was surprising given our team, but I think it just, we need some time for our stats to catch up. You can see here, we're getting obliterated by this Totsil Verm uh, jump team. I don't know if it's Verm or Worm. I've been saying Verm because it looks German, but that could absolutely be just blatantly false. And yeah, unfortunately we don't get, have a level 2 abomination yet, but still 2 abominations is good fun, if nothing else. <laughs> and here we are. It's a warg nuke. Yay! <laughs> but, we're actually doing okay here. And we manage a draw against a warg nuke, so something's going right. Something. <laughs> And there is, I think, the pet I try to get the most of. It's Stegosaurus. And you see here, I'm all I want is Stegos. Stegos are amazing. They, the amount of added stats you get from Stegos is very, very nice. You can see here, it's two 13-13 buffs. So, quite a lot of stats. And you see, it's actually going to carry us here. And... We're starting to really pick up here. I'm going for another level 2 uh, abomination. There's a few pets here that I wanted to give a try that I never got the chance. Like running a 4 squad with something like a... Uh, excuse me. A 4 squad with something like a uh, macaque or a robin. Unfortunately here, we get unlucky. Our mandrake had the possibility of canceling the turtle or canceling the microbe 
and it did the turtle, which loses us that round. And we're on to our final run, and this pack was a lot of fun to use. I might even do more of it just for fun, not expecting to win. Again, I wasn't expecting to win at all with this, but it, it clearly has the potential to. I mean, you can see it really sticking through, and it, it feels really nice, turn one, to not run into a pack that's running something that's unbelievably good. <laughs> It feels really nice. But yeah, I thought my behemoth video, uh, or my behemoth build that I had, would be the most fun build that I would have a chance to try out. And this one might beat it. I'm not sure. My behemoth run was really fun. Which, if you haven't seen that, I think is worth your time. I, uh, I thought it was really fun. There's only two games in that, too, so it's a bit shorter. But yeah, uh, Behemoth Run was really fun. I think this was honestly more fun. And you see me taking a Meerkat here? I don't know what kind of things have been happening to me that I'm taking a Meerkat willingly. But I took a Meerkat willingly. I, <laughs> I guess I should say, Meerkat's not well known for being like a strong unit. Or even like a usable one. But in, in the games I had here, it was actually... It was kind of nice, even with no synergy, because Meerkat is meant for gold synergy. Now you can see me buffing a lizard here. That was my second tier 2 pick I got. I added Salamander and Lizard, and you were already getting warged. <laughs> but it's not. Until Rock is around, Warg is not really able to do anything. But yeah, Lizard, I think, is just such good tempo tier 2. Maybe I've got a bias, but... Now, here you'll see something confusing. Uh, Pelican from Tier 4 is on my team. That's a end turn scaler. Uh, I don't remember why I sold that thing there and ran a 4 squad. Maybe my math was wrong, or maybe there's something here that I just don't see that would have been a good reason to do that. I forgot that, though. And yeah, we're, we're running against Vampire Bats, so, you know... It's turn 5, it's time to start losing the tier 4s. <laughs> I, I try not to be too cynical with it, with this, but it can get very frustrating over a long period of time. But yeah, Pelican, uh, while it is an end turn scaler, also functions on start of battle. Uh, which is kinda cool. I, uh... Yeah, it's... it's something. And Pelican is actually going to really carry us here. I kind of just took it out of annoyance that I had not yet gotten an Abomination, honestly. Which, I think this is the latest game that we don't get an Abomination until. We do get Abomination in this game, obviously, otherwise I won't be showing it to you. But Pelican helps out way more than I thought it would. And it's the Shining Star I didn't know this team needed, as you'll see. So yeah, I think this is the turn we get an Abomination. Oh, it, well, we get a Husky, so that's nice. And no Abomination still, yeah. Again, I promise it's there. Now, our Mandrake right now is level one and a half, which isn't super useful. Luckily, this person was only running tier two faint pets, but we really want a level two Mandrake so that it can stop tier four faint pets. If it stops a Microbe or it stops a Chimera, we probably win that round, or at least have a really good chance. I mean, obviously there's no Cyclops or anything in this pack, but... So, I mean, that's still an advantage other people have, but it's nice. Yeah, and so we've got a Abomination now. It eats a Slipe near, which means it's going to give a small amount of mana to the front pet. Not a great hit, but it's, it's something. And here you see we're winning. We're on seven wins for health, which is really nice. It, most of these games, I think, I actually won early, which was surprising to me. I, I thought I'd win late. Now I'm gonna pause here, getting werewolf here. I think there's a few werewolves I should have saved in this game. Uh, werewolf is great on even turns, as it, it just doubles your stats. And here we run against someone getting Moby Dick. If you want to know what the hell Moby Dick is, you can watch my uh, my video that tells you about that. But, yeah, th see, that werewolf there, I, I probably shouldn't have... Sa yeah, I shouldn't have saved that werewolf, but we're going to see more that I probably should have. I think it is 
an, it's up there with Stegosaurus and Leopard as like the top things I really want my Abomination eating. Yeah, the whole point of this pack is kind of, oh my gosh, stuff like this is crazy. This is why we need a level 2 Mandrake right there, Chimeras. But yeah, the point of this pack is that I can just take whatever, like I can just do whatever I want and my Abomination will always have something to eat. But yeah, I should have saved that Werewolf there, that would have been great. And, and you can see, I think that holds true. Pretty much any time I would end turn, my, my Abomination will have more than enough. It's very well fed, it's well nurtured. I'm a good Abomination owner, I promise. Maybe not good enough because we're losing. We're on to two life now, which I thought I was just going to pick up and keep going. Like, just charge forward. We get a Stego though, we get a Red Dragon. Two great hits. I should have saved that Werewolf too, because it wasn't going to be picked up, so I'd have it for an even turn next round. But, I mean, it's something. Now we've got the level 2 Bandrake. Things are a lot easier. See, this person's building towards a level 3 Chimera. Absolutely would have wiped us, probably. But we've managed to pull away with a win there because we're canceling the units I don't like. <laughs> Which is great fun. And you see here, we're on 9 wins. I, If we draw or lose, I've got a chance at a level 3 Abomination, which would be fun. Actually, I already had the badge before this, but I really wanted it to be level 3 regardless. Now, here we are running into Nessie's. Nessie is <laughs> so strong. Uh, it's another one of those, those big guys. So, we lose that one handedly. You can see two Stegos. This is fantastic, especially because Stego synergizes well with the Huskies. And it's time to send it. Two Stegos and a Leopard. Can't really ask for a better turn. At least on an odd turn when Werewolf wouldn't be available. But even then, you'd only really want one Werewolf. And here we go against a team that doesn't have any Unicorn Pets. But it's looking pretty bad. It's got a Lionfish. But the math's gonna work out here. We don't have much health remaining, but we win. So yeah, this pack was super fun. Uh, I'll have it in the description for you guys to use. Uh, have a wonderful day.